What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jake Billingsley. This is Decibel Duo. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing a little bit of lighting programming on a smaller rig. Um, sometimes I find it harder to demonstrate how I program when I have these large, complex um, setups with lots of big moving fixtures and lots of different diversity and fixtures and washes and strobes and pixel control and tons of stuff. But uh, this setup is for a dance on Saturday. Um, it's a small school by my house and Sam and uh, Sam, my dad and uh, Kay are going to be running the dance while I am doing a music festival uh, video for that. Uh, I'll make one for that as well. But uh, I just want to give you guys a quick uh, rundown of what I've got going on here. And uh, this is a setup that is easily can be easily repeated um, and mixed up in a bunch of different ways. And I will link the Chave Show Express show file in the description uh, for any of you guys who want to download it. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Let's get to it. Okay, for this tutorial, you need to know the basics of DMX. I've already added in my fixtures and I've uh, kind of put my rig together a little bit. Um, I have 16 slim par 56s. I've had these things for like four or five years since the very beginning. Uh, actually, the white ones I've had the longest. Uh, same with the strobes and same with these waves. I never really use the waves very much anymore because they're just not bright enough for the venues and the shows I'm doing, especially when you stick an RX-1 or a big spot next to it. They just, the spot or the beam, um, like overshadows or outpowers the, the wave. It just looks tinny on the stage. So uh, what I've done here is I'm inside of Chavez Show Express. I'm in the first page, the fixture, pa fixture page. I'm gonna go up, click on this little guy, export DMX address listing, brings you up to this wonderful page. It'll show you what universe your fixtures are on, the address, the name, and then the name, and usually like the quantity, quantitative number of how many I've got. So um, I'm actually gonna be using four of these uh, Shocker Panel 180s uh, on this rig, and I've only set up two DMX addresses for them, and I'm gonna duplicate uh, one of each for the strobes. Uh, but I wanted to leave all of my pars on their own address because I wanna do some really good chases with them and then the waves on their own address as well, um, mostly so I can offset the pan and tilt uh, between the two of them so they can mirror each other or they can go the same direction and I won't have any problem uh, doing that. It gives me a little more uh, control. Okay, so I got my address list here. I'm gonna skip through this part because at this point, um, I hope you guys know how to address your fixtures, put them on the right channels, uh, and set it all up. Okay, now that I have all my fixtures DMX'd, uh, I'm going to do a little quick test, make sure that's signal from everything. So uh, I'm just gonna go into the steps, make sure I am sending signal, grab my PARs, open the shutter, open the dimmer, bring up some color. Okay, looks like all but one. Um, I think that's our dud. That's as simple as taking it out, putting a new one in its place, and readdressing it, getting it up and running. Okay, uh, now I'm going to grab the strobes. Um, turn them on, open the shutter. Okay, they're working. Don't want to strobe myself in the face. And then I can grab the waves. This one's pretty easy. All you have to do is spin the X around and... Okay, they're both moving. Uh, and then my DJ par, or the little white ones on the ends here. They're both going on the same channel and uh, I'm just gonna use them to wash uh, Sam, who's DJing. Maybe in a red or in a blue or a green or a white. Just something nice to uh, hit him from the outside. Okay. Okay, so I built this rig in the 3D rendering engine. Um, basically, the DJ is gonna sit right in the center. Um, I have this big black board that goes in between uh, from here to about there. You've seen it in some of the other gig logs. Um, and it's gonna sit right there. 
and then um, subs I'll obviously put downstage here and then speakers on the outsides um, but I'm really liking this I still have that one par that I just added in right now for the DJ wash um, but I don't need to put that in the rendering um, but this is really cool so I love programming the rendering because um, obviously I was able to do all of this last night um, and then I was able to just quickly make some different uh, scenes so what I've got going on with the pars is I selected all my pars and this is really cool so um, I choose all of my colors in the scene area so if I click on blue here we go to edit it um, let me just close that out uh, it was created whoops got to select the pars okay it was created in the scenes and so what I try to do is I really want to make sure that all these um, snap steppers versus a, a fade are uh, on the stair instead of the escalator. So when I jump to a new um, cue, it will snap to the right color instead of fading into that color. Um, you can always go back on the actual cue and say fade in. That's why I um, leave it. You can make it go fade in or fade out and adjust the fade time after you build the scene in the live area. So I always make mine like that. And so really easy to make colors. I don't do anything with the shutter or the dimmer because I wanna do that. I wanna have dimmer effects and shutter effects like strobes and different chases, but I wanna be able to independently change the colors and not have them glued to the chase that it's on. So I selected all my pars here. Um, I go through a color, I hit save, I say blue, and then I just move the faders and I pull up green. I don't create a new scene, I leave it all the same, and I click this button right here, save as. And then I click save as green. And as long as I keep doing that and I keep making a new one after I save that one, making this one red, going to save as, save as red, they will all be different and none of them will overlap. I do not want to save this project because I'm inside of my blue editor. Okay, so if we get out of this, back to blue. So now you can see I've got blue, green, light blue, orange, pink, red, violet. And then these ones are some split colors. I, uh, I made an odd and even group over here. So pars odd. I went and made them like one color and then before saving the scene, I just clicked over to uh, part even, and I made those another color, and then I did the save as on that end as well. Um, for the shutters, for simple stuff like strobes and just leaving something open, I go ahead and do it in the scene as opposed to the generator area, and I just grab that dimmer, throw the dimmer all the way up, and throw the shutter up and make sure those uh, staircases are selected. Uh, we do not want those to be ramped, otherwise, it will take its nice, glorious time uh, fading up to 100% uh, intensity. So now I'm able to click par open and then change my colors as I please and pick whichever color I want to use. Um, this is also good for something called preloading colors or preloading a new scene is where um, okay, the show's going, they're on this color, and then I, all I have to do is uh, turn off the shutter, and I can choose a new color in what's called blind, or the blackout, and then when I'm ready to go again, say the drop of the song, I just open up the shutter, and it is already on that color. Uh, in my more advanced setups, I do this, but I do it with positions, and I will um, pull the dimmer down, on a group of fixtures like movers that I'm changing to a new position so when um, the drop hits all I have to do is slide up some dimmers or slide up the master dimmer. Another thing that I like to do when I set up my live set is um, a label my pages but keep my colors on one tab and my effects on another tab or keep it all individual. That way um, I can jump between my colors without affecting um, the other effects. And I always mark these as solo buttons so I don't overlap colors 
turn a bunch of things on and you never can get back to honestly when I found solo buttons or when whenever they added it uh, I've never gone back there's there are sometimes some stuff like maybe I'll have a page of miscellaneous effects like the hazer and the cold sparks I want to put on one thing because they're my special effects I don't want to be able to turn both of them on at the same time but all of everything that has to do with a lighting fixture um, will have its own breakout tab and a solo button assignment um, that's pretty easy to do you just go to button settings um, here I have how many boards I have one two three four that's this up here one two three four I can label it I can say if it's a tab or oh it used to be called a child window I don't know why they called it that uh, you can make it a window and say drag it it'll come up as its own like window display screen and you could drag it over to another monitor and expand your setup um, and then you can assign how many of these little uh, boards it has so on these ones I just need two because they're fairly simple um, the moving lights I'll do one for like positions one for colors one for um, like dimmer effects dimmer chases and another one for like my shutters different strobes or maybe one for gobos and you can have up to eight and um, I typically don't do that until I get to the macro page but that's pretty easy uh, you just oh, I'm gonna change my button size oh yeah this is always good to know 15 apply oh baby that that helped um, I always want to be constantly saving up here I always double click that little save button just because you never know what can go wrong and uh, you may lose your file and I've never lost a whole show file but always good to be safe so now let's program some chases when I program a chase I do not want to have any color on it I just want it to be the um, shutter and the dimmer um, so I'm going to put all my colors on red in the live setting and then I'm going to go inside the editor, go to the generator, send to DMX, select all of my PARs, got them selected, and then I'm going to turn my shutter on, make sure it's open, like that, and then turn my dimmer on. Now my lights come up. So this is where it gets really, really fun and interesting and easy so uh, you'll notice you can drag this bar down blah 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 and your lights will change but um, something that will take your programming to the next level is building your chases in uh, the generator instead of the step scene and it took me a long time to understand this because no one ever showed it to me but um, I used to like go through and say okay we're gonna have this one turn on and then new scene or new whatever it's called new scene turn it off N next one turns on new scene turn it off so then the lights would chase like back and forth you know kind of thing um and then i had kind of had this epiphany and i was like hmm i wonder what that does and i was just exploring the software more and i figured if you option click or uh i just do a little two click and add a point onto the dimmer curve uh, here's a really basic demonstration. I go up here and I hit play. So that's my lights. They're off and now they're on. And they're off and now they're on. And I was like, hmm, well, what's a way that I could, you know, fan the lights out and chase them? Uh, you go down here to this little shift, this little shifty, shifty guy, and you just move that to the right or to, to the left and it will fan your lights out. So now half of them are up here and half of them are down here. Um, so when I press play again, now they are chasing. Um, and you can see that they're just, they're moving along the plane next to each other, turning on and off when they hit this slope. Uh, so you can get a lot more complicated with this. We can do things like changing the curve to a line. Um, and instead of stepping, just like on the scene staircase where you can have a staircase or an escalator, um, now they are fading between each other. 
Um, and if you want to go an even smoother fade, we will go to the curves. And now we have a really smooth fade between all of the fixtures. Um, so I usually make one of each of these. Conveniently, Show Express gives you some free ones that I didn't know about. You just say load curve, and then they have a few default curves. Um, maybe this sign six point, we're gonna open it. Okay, it looks like that. These are a little low. Um, you wanna make sure that you bring them to the max in order to get the full intensity out of the fixtures. Let's bring those to the top. I'll hit play. Right, so now they're chasing up and down and I have a lot more spread. And so it determines on, depends on how many fixtures you have, how fast you want them to chase. This is just increases your uh, time. You know, see now they're going a lot faster like that. Um, but it really all determines on, it determines, it really depends on uh, how many fixtures you have, how far apart they are on your rig, because if they're a lot farther apart, um, they will appear to move um, slower because you are increasing the distance between each fixture. Oh, wait, is that right? No, 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 no. You're increasing the distance between each fixture. You have the same amount of time if they're all squished together. So it'll look like they're going faster because they're covering a larger distance. Um, you don't really need to know that, but you can definitely play around with the shifty guy. Uh, you can go the opposite direction and the lights will, they'll chase the opposite direction. Now they're chasing right to left. Um, that's a, that shift, that's a pretty wide exponential shift. If I bring it in less, uh, there you go. Now you can really tell that they're running in the line. Uh, you can do this with the shutter as well. You could say, okay, I wanna do strobe to open, to strobe to open, to strobe to open. Then I wanna offset the fixtures so that they do a strobe to open, to strobe to open, and they'll do different random size strobes and other fun stuff. Um, I haven't found a good, so this color macro is stupid on Show Express because I wish it gave you like more of the circle and you could do a rainbow chase of colors. Um, I've never figured out what this explode multi pan tilt means. If anyone knows what that means, please let me know because I'm interested in learning about that. Okay, so I've gone in, I'm not gonna save that. I've gone in and I've made some scenes with my fixtures. Um, I have done a par pulse. So um, I found this one, I don't know. I think SLM used it, whatever. It's just a really good like, like a easy vibe. Not really a slow song, but just like a, just some lights on the dance floor. Honestly, it kind of sucks. It's really, really rudimentary, really elementary, not rudimentary, it's very elementary. Um, something like this is a more fun chase. Um, and then I know you can assign a speed dimmer. You can make this dimmer a dimmer or a speed chase. And I think you can adjust the time of the button based on, oh wait, maybe we just go to speed properties. Oh, okay. That do it let's try 25 percent. oh yeah, yeah yeah okay look i'm learning new things too uh, speed properties i'm gonna go back to like 100 percent or whatever you'd add the speed slider we'll add the speed slider so all the speed slider does is it gives you that percent percentage and you can make this chase really fast or you can make it chase really slow. Um, and I believe, I'm not certain, but I wonder if you can set that particular slider to a fader on a MIDI controller, because then it would make it stupid easy to change the speed time. But I think that's kind of what the group 
master faders are for and to change those to speed. Um, other ones are just like a sign that's the same exact um, curve as the saw. It's just the escalator, so now the, all the lights are fading together. Um, I thought this was a random strobe because in the, if I take you into the window view here, when I made this last night, some firewall may block this. You just gotta go in there and say, nope, unblock. When I made this last night, see, let's send a DMX. Make sure I got that color selected. No, okay, well. It was hard to tell the speed of it. Oh wait, yeah, see, check that out. So it's like really moving a lot. I think it's doing that, it's just a little too fast. So maybe we can edit that. Uh, got all those things selected. Go to my sh Is this a... Oh, yeah, okay. Oh yeah, I have my shutter at 100% though. So maybe I bring my shutter down? I don't know. We'll try that. Nope, okay, whatever. I don't wanna figure that out right now. Uh, and then a halftime strobe is just like a, like a fast blink, blinky thing. It looks way cooler in the 3D view but what can you do? All right, moving on. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the strobes up there. So these are the Shave DJ Shocker Panel 180 USB. Uh, I'm running them in two channel mode. They actually, you can like, um, you can control four different sections of each strobe. They kind of break out into these hors or these uh, four vertical columns. But I'm not too worried about that. I just want to do good classy strobe scenes. So um, like I said earlier, I have two of them duplicated. So the inside strobes are on the same address and the outside strobes are on the same address. Um, so in the, this is simple. Um, because if you check it out, there's only two scene or uh, sorry, two channels. Oh my gosh! Get blinded right now. I'm gonna turn that off. Okay. Um, strobes. There's only two things. So here, and uh, I just bring the dimmer to full. Again, I make sure I'm doing a staircase so they don't try to fade in. I just want them to jump straight to 100 percent. And um, I'm going to love change the intensity of the strobe each time I want it to go faster or slower. And then also in the same page, I've made two generator scenes and um, those control, you know, maybe a little chase effect um, or this one. I don't know what I'm going to use this one for yet. It's just a um, dimmer sign, you know, on a curve. Um, but a little tutorial on how I did this scene because these ones are fun Especially if you use all eight channels of the strobe fixture and you break out and you pixel use the pixel control feature um, Why will that not okay there we go And This is discouraging This is not what I want. I don't know what happened Go to this one go to edit Got them. Okay, there we go. So all I have to do is check mark the shutter so that I know that the shutter is on and I'm just gonna leave it where it's at. And then the dimmer, you can see what I've got going on here. Um, I've got my shift all the way out. I'm doing it in points so they step between each other. When I play, they turn on and off. Where's that? He left to go get my truck, like that. Um, so they, they play back and forth, and because the uh, shifty guy is all the way to the left, they are shifted and turning on and off at different times. 
All right, I am finished with how much I'm going to do for this rig. Um, if the dance was more important than I would, but I do not have time because it is already 2.45 and I still have to set up a, another light show for a larger show I'm doing on Saturday at this music festival um, in downtown Phoenix. So, quick run through about what I did. Um, we did the pars, we did the strobes, we did not do the whiz. So, um, whoever's running this, I just made some really simple positions for all these waves. Um, they actually had some built-in macros that I just edited because they already said like, oh, you know, built-in programs that do different positions, um, slap some different colors. Color mixing on these things sucks, but it does have red, green, blue, and uh, it has a good white, you know, it has that good white LED. Um, and then they had, I don't know, the color mixing grid, but I did find this one, this one's called sound color, and the colors uh, fade based on like, you know, sound, kick drum or the bass or whatever. Um, and then I made some cool chases, so let's see if I put this right here in the middle. Pick a solid color, maybe blue. All right, um, yeah, so this right here is just my open, and then chase one, something unique. We're gonna have haze in there, so um, that should be some cool beams. And then that one, but I particularly like uh, shining these straight in front of the truss. I think if we have some good haze uh, you'll really be able to see those beams, especially if we add a, a simple chase. It should look like a really cool uh, wash of sharp beams right in front of the whole truss. Uh, running it, I decided not to do a macro page just because um, there's only pars and waves to control, so whoever's running it can just jump back and forth between those pages, um, find a color, a chase, position, go to the pars, grab a new par color, uh, jump around in the par section. Um, and then there's a strobe page. Uh, this is just, you know, a, a flash button. So when I press it down, it flashes and I release it, it turns off. That simple, you just go into the settings on each button and you select flash button down there. Um, you know, you can still go that medium strobe or that slow strobe or that random strobe. Um, and then I will obviously add the uh, intensity faders so we can do like a master and preload the pars and preload the strobes um, so they can really run a lot better. But I don't think the uh, people running this will have a MIDI controller, so um, it may just be easier to not do a whole fader thing, make it all confusing, and make it super simple. And then... Uh, the DJ pars and the hazer. I left them on white. Uh, usually we use like red or blue, but um, I don't know. I just felt like maybe a white, but dimmed down a little bit might look pretty good for this show. So that is all. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you carried on this whole entire time, um, I need to make a new, tear all this down right now and get working on my new uh, fe music festival setup. Thanks. Bye.